turbo engines are all over the place. This is the new Hyundai i20 and as you can see from the badging on the grille, this gets the turbocharged petrol engine. So it makes the most power in this class. It is mated to a twin clutch automatic gearbox and is claimed to be the fastest car in this class. But can it deliver on the thrill of driving? Exactly what it says on our t-shirt. Well, if you like this t-shirt, we are giving away these cool t-shirts. Let us know what you think of the thrill of driving, what the thrill of driving means to you in the comments below. And you could win one of these cool t-shirts. But anyway, back to this test. Can the i20 put a smile on our face? Only one way to find out, and that is to pit it against our benchmark. And that is the Polo. Now, we've got the Polo in the new GT TSI trim. It no longer gets the DSG twin clutch automatic. It gets a six-speed torque converter automatic, but it does get the same turbo petrol engine, the one liter turbo petrol engine. Can the i20 put a wider smile on our face than the Polo already does? That's what this test is all about. This test is all about the thrill of driving. First impressions with this new Hyundai i20. I have to say, the styling, it looks really cool. Some would say this is a bit overdone, but I think it is quite something. It really stands out on the road and all those slashes and creases and the chrome at the back and this blacked out grille up front, it makes it look quite the head turner. Unlike the Creta, which is still very polarizing, the i20 I think will have more fans, especially for the way it is styled. And as for these interiors, they really look good. It's got this Audi-like full width aircon vents, all these horizontal lines, it makes the cabin look wider. The cabin does feel more spacious than even the other rivals and especially more spacious than the outgoing i20. The digital clocks, now I'm not a fan of that. We saw the same layout on the Verna and I think these fonts, they look too much like 80s, 90s Casio calculators. And I don't like the fact that RPM is in 1.4, 1.5, 2.5, 4.5, 5 5.8. Uh, RPM to me is 5,000 RPM, 5,400 RPM. So I don't like that, but I guess this is something that we'll have to get used to. And I don't think other cars are going to go back to analog dials. So, well, we are stuck with digital dials. It is what it is. The screen, massive for a car so small. That's a massive screen. And in terms of equipment, you now you get this air purifier out here. I would have preferred what Kia does where the air purifier is integrated into the armrest but this is your air purifier and this particular car that we are driving is the turbo petrol so it makes the most power in this class and it is claimed to be the quickest so does the i20's power advantage make it quicker than the polo only one way to find out and that is a straight up drag race so let me hand over to Atish for a quick drag race and then we'll come back into the hills and talk about the way this car handles. Right, so Hyundai i20 versus Volkswagen Polo GT. How do these two cars square off? In terms of engine spec, they're very similar. Both of them get one liter three cylinder turbo petrol engines. The i20, it makes 118 bhp and it has the power advantage because the Polo, it makes 108.5 bhp. Historically, the Polo has had a DCT gearbox, but now this new Polo GT, it gets a torque converter. When we tested it, we actually liked how quick and snappy the torque converter was, but it's still not a DCT. The i20, it now gets a DCT, and the i20 is also lighter for 2020. How did these cars square off? Let's drag them to find out. Right, so the i20, let's start here. Uh, I've got to do all the drag race basics. So I'm going to put my AC off, traction control off, get the transmission into sport, and let's go. It's me versus the Polo. Three, two, one, go. And immediately the Polo is off the line quicker. This thing doesn't rev up too high and the clutch when it engages, it engages very gently and the Polo gets a good lead straight off the line. Feels much quicker. And I can't seem to catch up either. Now just to be certain that this wasn't Anu's rally driving skill versus mine at launching the car, 
we're going to swap drivers and try this again. Okay, so now in the Polo, the same rules apply. AC off, um, traction control off, gearbox in sport, and we're ready. And immediately I pull away faster. This thing launches much more aggressively. And then even through the gears, the mid range, it really pulls hard. I've left him for dead. So no doubt about it, zero to 100, quarter mile, the Polo is quicker. Now this test is purely about thrill of driving, but let us not gloss over the other factors that actually make you buy a car. First is comfort. These seats are excellent, really excellent. If you compare it to the Polos, the Polos feel 10 years old. This is wide, it is supportive, even the under thigh support is very good. I would have liked the steering to adjust for reach, it only adjusts for rake right now. But honestly, I've got a very good driving position for my height and that is 5 foot 9 inches. So I think the comfort is great, the driving position is great, the visibility is very good, the fit and finish is very good, the equipment levels are very good, though there are no seat coolers and Hyundai has actually spoiled us by giving us seat coolers on everything. It's got a wireless charging pad, obviously all the connected features, it's got that concierge. So everything is there on this car. And I like the fact that this is all black. This is the turbo, so it's got all blacks with this slight red accenting all over the place, which is subtle and very nicely done. It also gets a sunroof, but I think in India, the sunroof should be firmly shut because idiots stick their kids out of it, which is so, so dangerous silly things that we guys do but anyway it's our job to educate please don't put anybody out of the sunroof in any case it's a small sunroof so i don't think too many people will fit through that the space inside the car is good the back seat space is not class leading but it is pretty adequate it's quite all right for a car and the i20 it actually showcases how small premium hatchbacks have come of age Today, everybody's talking about compact SUVs and you think that a car like this, a premium hatchback, would not really have any takers. But I think this is a very sensible buy. It's no longer cheap. This top-of-the-line turbo is actually pretty expensive. The range-topping price is eye-watering for a hatchback. But then you get the equipment and you get the turbocharged engine, you get the twin-clutch automatic gearbox, and that's the reason why it will go up against the Polo GT TSI. So the Polo is here to give us perspective of what the thrill of driving is supposed to be for cars in this segment. But first, we have to address what is on everybody's mind. Yes, this is a 10-year-old car. This cabin, it feels 10 years old, it looks 10 years old. It actually doesn't feel 10 years old because in terms of the fit finish, it actually is right up there with the class benchmarks. But in terms of the equipment, for instance, and also the general layout, the design, it has been around for 10 years. So this is a decade old car from the outside as well as on the inside, but it has the new engine. So now this is the new GT TSI, which gets the one liter TSI engine and the six speed torque converter automatic. It's not the twin clutch, it's not the DSG gearbox. So does that really make a big difference to the way the Polo performs? Honestly, no, because this torque converter in terms of the shift quality as well as the shift speeds is right up there with the best in the class. So you can leave it normally in sport mode like I have left it right now or put it into drive and tap the gear lever to the left. So down goes down the box, up goes up the box and shifting gears is actually quick enough. It also is smoother than a DSG. So the DSG obviously has the outright speed in terms of shift speeds, but I really can't complain with this torque converter automatic. And this engine, it is a beauty. It has been downsized from the earlier 1.2, but in terms of performance, it is right up there and it feels quick. So tap it into first, floor it, and you get that kick. It actually does push you back in the seat. So when it comes on boost, 
you actually get that kick from the engine. It feels quick, it sounds quick. You could also point out that the sound is basically due to the slight irregularity in the three-cylinder layout. So that unrefinement that is inherent to all the three-cylinder engines, that is getting manifested. But over here, all the sound is accompanied by a proportionate increase in speed. So to me and to us enthusiasts, this sounds sporty. This sounds like a fast car. And honestly, this is still a quick car. So the manual with the one liter TSA engine, it dips under 10 seconds for the zero to 100 kilometer sprint. With the automatic, the zero to 100 kilometer sprint goes up by a second, second and a half, but it is still quick. You can still have a lot of fun with this car. And fun is the key selling factor for the Polo, especially the Polo GTTSI. There's enough and more power to make quick overtakes, quick and safe overtakes. I always say that a faster car is a safer car because you don't have to struggle to overtake. So you don't have to make risky overtaking maneuvers. You just put your foot down, the gearbox, it downshifts quickly and you're off. You make a quick, safe overtake. Remember that a faster car is a safer car. Now the rest of the Polo. The chassis obviously is the same 10 year old chassis. But in terms of the torsional rigidity, it is fantastic. This is the same chassis that a lot of guys rally in the Indian National Rally Championship. And it has the handling chops to back up the performance of the engine. So the steering weight has been increased. They did this a couple of years ago. It's not just with this new GTT SI. So the steering weight does not feel too light. It does not feel too flighty. And it gives you confidence to drive it faster. So compared to that quick drive that we did in the i20, we'll go back into the i20, but the i20 feels light. This feels much heavier. So to drive the i20 is actually easier. It takes less effort, but this weight that the Polo delivers, that sense of heft, it actually gives you the confidence to drive it faster. It also is slightly quicker on corners. So the front end has better bite. So it grips better. There is less initial understeer with the Polo. The stiffness in the chassis is also manifested at times when the inside rear wheel lifts. So that's also there. It does look cool, but you have to be really pushing the car to get that inside wheel to lift. But overall, you have more confidence in pushing the Polo hard and fast. We have been accused of being biased towards Volkswagens in general and the Polo in particular. But honestly, that's because of the way it drives. No other reason. This is a familiar car, right? There is no other reason for us to call for this over and over again, save for the fact that this puts a big fat smile on our face, especially when you put your foot down. And now even with this torque convert automatic, it does not really lack for power. We would obviously always ask for a little bit more power. That's there. You know, we are never fully satisfied, but by all other yardsticks, this is great fun to drive and it grips really well. It gives you that confidence when you're going around corners. The body roll, it is there, but it is not exaggerated. You know what is happening. So through the seat of the pants and through the palms, you can feel what the car is up to and where the limits are. So you know when the limits are being approached and you don't go over the limit but you can play at the limit. And that is the really cool part of the Polo. But how does this compare with the i20? Let's go back to the i20 to find out. Right then, back into the i20 and now we put our foot down. This engine has the most power in this class. It is more powerful than the Polo and it is quick. Now, after the Polo, the first sensation that you get in the i20 is of lightness. This is far easier to drive, but it also feels a bit too light. The steering, for instance, I would have liked a sport mode where the steering would weigh up slightly. This is great for the city, but out here in the hills, it feels a bit too light. So it does everything that you would want. It turns in well. The steering is actually very direct, quick and precise, but it doesn't feel connected, if you know what I mean. So when you point it into a corner, it does turn, 
but uh, it doesn't have the sense of heft that weightiness to it that sense of confidence that the polo gives you you don't really get that from the i20 you will eventually get it once you start driving it more and then get used to the car but the polo you sit in it and you immediately can go fast in the i20 you take some time and that is mainly due to how light it feels the second thing is ride quality the overall balance of ride on the i20 is very good so even the small ripples and bumps it doesn't throw it off when you're doing hard cornering with the polo and you hit a few bumps you can really feel the impact it doesn't throw the car around too much but you can feel the impact here the sophistication in the chassis and the dampers is much nicer so it soaks in those bumps much better and you can drive it faster and the third is this engine now it has more power than the polo i'm sure this is also lighter than the polo hyundai for some strange reason don't give out weight figures but it feels lighter and all new cars are getting lighter so i'm sure this is lighter than the polo it also feels lighter and the power to weight ratio should be better but it doesn't feel faster and it isn't faster than the polo the polo is almost a second quicker than the i20 and that mainly is because of its lazy takeoff so i think to preserve the longevity and the life of this dct gearbox you can't really accelerate very hard so you can't do a launch with a bit of tire spin for instance even when you launch the engine is not revving in the sweet spot so it takes some time then it comes on to boost and then it starts moving it's the same criticism that i've had with the verna with the venue with all other cars with this turbocharged engine in making this engine refined and in removing all the turbo lag they have sort of robbed it of character so when you put your foot down there is no lag but there is no kick in the back also and finally in terms of handling now hyundai's cars have become nicer and nicer to drive and the handling has become much nicer and it's the same with the i20 it can carry serious amount of speed round corners it can grip and go it can work its tires you can hear the tires working for their life and the chassis is very sophisticated it does handle really well it's only that the feel that sensation that feeling of weightiness that is in there and that sort of robs you of the sense of confidence that the polo delivers but in terms of outright speed round corners the i20 is on par with the polo does the i20 set the new thrill of driving benchmark honest answer the polo it's 10 years old but it still puts the widest smile on our faces it is the most confident it delivers the most confidence when you're going around corners it is that slight bit quicker when you drag it against the i20 and it feels the most planted but that's it the i20 it is almost up there in terms of the driving experience it is only when you're caning it up here in the hills that the polo nudges slightly ahead but in a car what all are you looking for you're looking for drivability you're looking for comfort you're looking for equipment you're looking for features and for just a lakh and a half more than the polo you get so much more with the i20 as a package the i20 makes a lot of sense and it is hard not to recommend it to all of you even driving enthusiasts but ultimate chops the polo it's still ahead subscribe to the evo india channel and hit the bell icon to keep pace with the thrill of driving